Hello, Fantastic Beast fans. With the release of the first teaser trailer, we caught an exciting glimpse of what appears to be Credence's family tree. But with a higher resolution image release, there's so much more to see. What skeletons are lurking in Credence Barebones past? And what might it reveal about his obscurial powers? Join me and other Fantastic Beast fans here on the Beast Chaser Forum as we uncover the secrets, discover what's coming first, and play along with Rowling's newest game. After having more time to think, plus reading your excellent comments, I've got several new theories and changes I'd like to make to my initial reaction to the trailer. But to keep the video from being an hour, I'll do them in a series of, I hope, short ones. Also, some of these new ideas I covered in a longer article that I wrote for the Rolling Library. I hope you'll check it out and their excellent magazine online. I've linked to them above and in the description below. In the last video, we discussed this brief scene of Grindelwald and Vinda Rosier standing before a crowd presenting what Pottermore is calling an orb, like in the Hall of Prophecies. But since then, I've had some further thoughts that will relate to everything presented in this video. Notice that the setting seems to be almost like an ancient stadium or theater, with that stone-cut entrance right in front of Grindelwald, and light coming from what may be an opening above, shining directly on that sundial-like dais they're standing on. You can imagine secret ancient rituals taking place here. In Harry Potter, only the subject of a prophecy could touch its orb, but that may not be true in France. And as you will see shortly, Rosier has French links. Whatever information Vinda holds, it may relate to her powerful family and is intended by Grindelwald to persuade this roomful of wealthy and influential wizards and witches to support his cause, perhaps even a secret society who are somehow connected to the information that orb contains. Remember, an orb is only a recording of what someone said, something others believe to be a prediction. Most never came true. They were seen as burnt out bulbs in the Hall of Prophecy. But one could easily be manipulated to twist the truth as Grindelwald would have others believe it. What information that orb contains I believe relates very directly to the writing on the wall presented in that underground scene that reveals Credence's biological heritage. In the last video, I said that Lita and Credence appeared to be cousins, but I was wrong. Thanks to WV for pointing this out in the comments. According to this chart, Lita seems to be Credence's half-sister. Her mother was Lorena Kama and his was Clarice Tremblay. Their father was Corvus Lestrange. But the notes and pictures around this basic setup is where things get even more interesting. First, an explosive sign below Credence's father's name may hint that the Obscurus was hereditary, including the ability to control it long enough to pass the power on to offspring. Also, Tremblay, the name of Credence's biological mother, is a surname related to a place name in France. Could this mean that Credence has French ancestry on his mother's side? Clarisse is also a French name. Further above, you get more hints of Credence's French ancestry in relation to other wizarding families. Minet Roger and Eloise Beaufort are listed as wives of Corvus Lestrange. Rosier is a French surname, and the actress who plays Benda is French-English. It is possible that the chateau we see Grindelwald emerging from at the beginning of the first film belongs to the Rosier family, and they have long provided cover for Grindelwald. Now here is where I'm getting very speculative and am probably wrong, but notice all the males are Corvus. I know it's common to pass down the father's name, especially in aristocratic families, but why no markings of first, second, third, etc.? Is it possible that this is the same man being repeatedly bred with different women? Yes, I know there are downward lines to show descendants, so I admit I'm probably wrong about all this. 
it just seems a bit odd that the senior, junior, third, etc., are missing in this careful reconstruction of a family tree that has been deliberately hidden away. Notice too in this scene that there are trunks that have held the piles of charts and notes that are now scattered about the room. And some of the scribbling on the wall appears to be more notes, gender symbols, diagrams, equations even. This room appears to be a secret study. It's as if someone has been deliberately studying this family tree or breeding experiment. And who is the man standing there staring at these images? He's studying the writing on the wall and seems to be looking very directly at one key name, comma. In the comments, WV speculated that this is use of comma, and that makes a lot of sense. I'd first thought it might be Nicholas Flamel. After all, with his longevity and French connections, he might have been tracking this Lestrange family through the centuries for some time now. Whoever he is, the papers around him seem to be left in disarray, as if they might have been recently scattered about. But the mystery man seems completely in control, not the one to have scattered them so wildly. Could someone have previously discovered this trove and scattered the papers in anger? Someone who just found out that he is the result of experimental breeding? Could that explain Credence's rage in this scene with the caged up magical beast? As mentioned in the prior video, we see that Credence has gained even more control over his parasitic infection, but definitely angry here. And speaking of Credence as Obscurus, let's talk about the name Corvus and that bird in the middle of the explosive symbol below his father's name. Corvus is the genus name for crows or ravens. They are considered very intelligent animals when folklore are often associated with war and death. A bird also happens to feature on the Tremblay crest or coat of arms. In the first film, when Credence blew up in the City Hall subway station, his debris was described this way. All power subsides. Only small tatters of black matter are left, floating through the air like feathers. This relates to prior theories I have on Credence and his ultimate fate. I'll link to them above and in the description below. For now, I want to point out one more note on this wall chart. Credence's adopted name is also listed, meaning whoever recorded this secret family history was well aware of Credence's new home. I believe the young boy was sent away because of the powers he possessed, to protect him from those who would use him, or to protect others against him. This may be going out on another longer limb, but I even wonder if it is possible that Mary Lou was chosen specifically to guard Credence, knowing that her abusive control would increase his rage and thus his powers. Which all brings us back to that orb Rosier holds. Is it possible that this orb does not record a prophecy after all, but the results of an experiment? a breeding experiment in particular, several decades in the making, if it's the result of a deliberately controlled eugenic study, one that her family, in relation to credences, may have had access to, and one that this secret gathering may find compelling. Eugenics is the study of how to improve the human race through selective breeding. This may come as a surprise, but the practice and study were popular and scientifically acceptable until the Nazis put it to such horrible and devastating use. But here, on this secret wall, could someone have been recording experiments with how to breed an obscurial so strong that he could control the parasitical infection inside him? Could a mad wizarding scientist have been devising a magical weapon of mass destruction? one to be deployed among the whole wizarding race to make them truly the master of others, an experiment that succeeded in the birth of Credence. Once again, I want to emphasize that I'm aware I get very speculative with a couple of points, 
But even if the senior Corvuses are not the same man and are truly different generations, that does not mean that a breeding experiment was not being conducted. Why all the secrecy regarding this lineage? Is it just to hide that Credence's father was a powerful enough obscurial to survive long enough to pass his traits on to his even more powerful son? And if there was a breeding experiment, what was it about Clarice Tremblay that made her genes the explosive match? So what do you think? Is this theory just too far out there? Please share your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next video where I'll explore more about our first trailer. Also, be sure to check out my newest release, Fantastic Secrets Behind Fantastic Beasts, the video book. Like Newt's Trunk, it's a living, expanding assembly of theories and videos that I will update until The Crimes of Grindelwald releases in November. I've linked to it in the description below. Until next time!